Uh, they had an old pallet shop where they had accidentally covered some 30 or 40 years ago, and when they just uncovered them here recently, they had petrified, turned to solid rock. Iowa farmers pulled up some fence posts that had been in the ground 50 years, and they had petrified from ground level down in 50 years. So the worldwide flood would have caused all the fossils. And it's not that there aren't enough fossils to study. There are trillions of fossils. But there aren't any intermediate fossils to study because they bring forth after their kind, exactly like the Bible says. There, there has been no evolution in the sense of changing from one kind of animal to another. Dinosaurs have always lived with man. Man is responsible for killing them off. Where all this, that's where all the legends of the killing of the dragons come from. And a few species, like Apatosaurus, 30 foot long, are still in Africa right now. I've got a green book on the table. Dr. Roy Mackle, an avid evolutionist, has been over there twice. There have been 12 expeditions uh, to the central Congo swamp in the last 12 years to try to photograph the Apatosauruses still living there. And that's where my research has been in cryptozoology. I have many pictures and uh, eyewitness accounts of some of these few remaining dinosaurs that are still alive. And they're not like Komodo dragons. Uh, they, if, of course, if we had not found the Komodo dragon alive and had only found the skeleton, it would be listed as a dinosaur. The fact that it's alive precludes it from being a dinosaur in the minds of many. But uh, their dinosaurs have been hunted to the point of extinction in most parts of the world, and most species are extinct. But a few still remain to this day. That would be... Uh fun trip for... Uh, and He's going back this year, Dr. Mackle is. Right. Contro controversial about dinosaurs. We have, again, two things there I saw come up that we just, I'm sorry, the, f the flood, worldwide flood, and uh, evidences for that we haven't even got into, uh, dinosaurs, but, uh, and all about, di are they today, are they not today, what were they, where, when were they, um, which, I don't know how strong that is for or against position of evolution or creation. I think a, a common concern, and I, you, you approached this yesterday on the radio, but I'd like to maybe conclude with, and I think this is really um, deals with the whole subject as far as uh, I'm concerned. I mean, both of you stated that you're dealing with a, a faith rather than a fact, and uh, why is it that only evolution is taught, in your estimation, in our school system and maybe it's not that way, but seems to be. Um, and I think you you stated you think um, if I can get the right words, uh, you stated they're they're hiding it. Um, it's kind of being kept out on Cre purpose. Creation is being kept out. Politically expedient to teach evolution. It's the currently accepted theory. Just like the flat earth, you know, when, it's, when that, everybody believed flat earth, you didn't dare teach anything else, or are, geocentric theory. We're or dealing anything. with theories, so the theory, uh, what's your theory, why it's not being, why uh, evolution is being taught as fact rather than theory? Well, because the implications Which of... I can, I can document that. Sure, oh, I, I've I'm got many, out. hundreds of the public school textbooks myself, I collect them, but um, the, the implications of creation are unacceptable to many. If this world was created, then there may be a creator that they have to be accountable to, and I'm convinced that's a strong underlying reason. The second thing, I think, is majority opinion. People are afraid to go against their colleagues' opinion, and they know they will be censored out or ridiculed. Uh, you don't dare go against the established scientific uh, dogma. Just like Galileo was nearly executed for saying the moon had craters on it because the scientific establishment said, no, the moon was smooth. And anytime you go against the, the politically correct um, attitude of the day, you are asking to be so you're ostracized. you the term political, if I can interrupt you. You're talking about well, by politically that, not from... Not from Democrat and Republican, no, no. You're talking about in the scientific community. Right, in the scientific peer community. Pressure, peer pressure. pressure. It, is, it, is, it is scientifically acceptable to believe in evolution, and it is scientifically unacceptable. Uh, of course, then you've got to have get a definition of who is a scientist. In many, they will say, if you do not believe in evolution, you are not a scientist. Therefore, you are not qualified to make a judgment. Uh, I, say, I asked the uh, uh, doctor yesterday on the radio, or Monday, Sunday on the radio, if what would happen if a geologist at this university began believing in a young earth and creation? And he said he does not think such a creature exists. In other words, if you believe in creation, and I, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but if you believe in creation, and if you believe the earth is young, you are no longer a qualified geologist. What, uh, just kind of expand on yesterday, you talked about why. Yeah, let me, about... let me address uh, the initial part there, though, about why <coughs> evolution is taught and creation isn't. Remember, I pointed out early that science is not grinding an ax for any particular thing. It just 
working at this basis on and completely separate of any particular source. Now, the creationist view as put forth by creation science in this country stems entirely from Judeo-Christian literature, which in this country where we have a separation of church and state, you can impose one particular sex view on society, whereas there is no particular aspect of theology in the reporting of the converging evidence toward this is how the earth was formed and the evidence Question. before it. Yes. Now the yes. argument, yes. Or, let, me, let me get the first numbers that you pause to write down. Read those back that he made mention of 94% of the people believe in such and such and do not believe. Now suddenly this less than 10% of, of people who constitute this powerful lobby, we scientists who few people know, have imposed our biased view and thrown out facts. I think that what we're dealing with here is the, I, mean, I say, judge for yourself. And remember, as I say, think of what scientific investigation and the reality, the truth that it has brought, have generated in your life today. But suddenly we pick on one particular subject? No, that's not true at all. It is basically a question of, um, it's not a finished theory. We and don't I, know all. And I was fishing. As you, as you well, could be, but I the was long and short. For you to yeah. say what you said yesterday, because yeah. I believe, and you were talking about political. Mm -hmm. you're, but you were talking about the political scientific community. But you were talking about yesterday, political. And that's I think these we the people. I think that's why you're here. You have allowed it to happen. Yeah. I mean, you're the ones yeah. that have allowed because he was saying politically, yeah. every textbook is determined by the local community. And if you're allowing it to happen, you're saying we're going to, yeah. if, you, if you believe that it ought to be taught, uh, it ought not to be taught as fact, well then you ought to be telling somebody about that <coughs> versus uh, sitting around and complaining about it. And uh, that's what a lot of people do. If they don't like something, they complain mm -hmm. about it instead of saying something about it and telling somebody you don't like it and saying, you know, change it. And, but you're uh, going to have to come up with reasons other than it is not my belief. Right. Because your religious belief is not a basis of imposing a means of instruction. And, I think and you cannot believe me in a courtroom or in a valid debate get by with some of the misrepresentations that have come from creation science, where they selectively take certain things and use them. And I'm not saying scientists don't do it, but on the side of science is the overwhelming strength of self-criticism, self, uh, we might say, refinement and development of growth in a, an environment of criticism. But Dr. Hilp Hilpman has been, and Dr. Hoven both have stated, and uh, we, we have it uh, an, uh, an understanding that both are, in scientific terms, theories. In scientific terms, theories. Um, a theory because nobody was there. Mm -hmm. And that's my only contention, of course, as a Bible-believing Christian, and uh, from biblical respect, I've stated again, I'm all open to the theory. My biggest contention is the fact that, that textbooks say it's fact. Well, let's put, let's put it in the context of today's news or the last week. We've been, I've been listening, and I'm so sick and tired of hearing about this couple in Topeka with their baby in and out of the hospital because of their beliefs that without medicine and so forth. When you get into the field of medicine and much of what we're doing there, it's based on a number of things that are not accepted by religious dogma. And if you don't choose to